when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Amen. Amen. Uh, just keep everybody in prayer. Some people out. Sister Turner is out as well. Uh, the Whitfields are in inner city. He's preaching today. Uh, so keep him in prayer as well. Um, and uh, it's just good to be in the house of the Lord. I want to review what we uh, from the last Bible study quickly. I already kind of uh, um, edited the slides. So I won't show all the slides I showed um, on Wednesday, but I will, you, I, I, I clipped out a couple so we can help go over, kind of surmise what we talked about. One of the things we talked about is anger and anger management, because anger is an emotion that we all have. And just like any other emotion, there's always some stimuli outside of us, right? Uh, that brings on joy, that brings on, well, not joy, that kind of joy is, that's, that's God. Uh, but what I'm saying is that, you know, whether it's anger or disappointment, uh, whatever it is, this emotion, we had this emotion that anger is an emotion that God has given us as a mechanism to let us know that something's wrong. Okay? That's how we know something's wrong, when it's anger. And we talked about it's hard, we talked about pain management. We said it's hard to be able to figure out if something is hurting on the, in your spirit, in your soul, uh, versus something physically hurting, you can tell the doctor where it's hurting at. But when your soul is hurt, and when, you, when, you, when you're broken, it's hard to put a finger on where that is, right? And so anger is an emotion that we have um, that when, uh, when we are broken, you know, this emotion kicks in and helps us to understand that, you know, we need to correct some things. When we sin against God, we ought to get upset and repent. Of, of that sin, and um, that's one of the things that God is angry at. Every time when you see God got angry, it's all we had to do with sin, because that's what upsets God, okay? So what we talked about, anger management, briefly, we just listed three types, not, to, not trying to be too philosophical or anything, so I just, it's just three types. Hasty, sudden anger, that's when it's spontaneous. Uh, I use the example of a child playing in the backyard, and they get out the backyard and they run out near the curb, and you think, oh man, they, the curb is gonna get hit, and then you grab the child and say, you ain't supposed to do that, or they plan, they know they ain't supposed to be out there by the street. So you get, that's uh, spontaneous, right? That's a hasty, just, just happened because of what just took place. Uh, that anger, that's the, you know, something that happens, but that's outside. Settled or deliberate anger, that's when you plan to get somebody back for doing something or saying something. You know, you deliberately plan and do those things that like that. That's that deliberate anger. So you're, you're planning how to take vengeance or how to get somebody back. That's deliberate anger. So that's, that's another type. And then you have the dispositional anger. Uh, dispositional anger is something that when it gets really bad that you're angry all the time, it becomes a trait. Anger should not be a character trait, but it becomes a trait because you're always harboring something. Something's always wrong, and you get so used to it that it becomes a habit. Your face is always frowned. You can't, and nothing good. So you say, hey, what a great day it is. What, what's great about it? You know what I mean? It's just dispositional. It's just angry all the time about something. They never, they can't find joy that way at all. So they have these things. But all these things happen to us sometimes. We don't want this one to happen. Where it becomes a character trait where we upset all the time. Okay? But this hasty and subtle, this sometimes this happens. You really want to get people back. I, I'll say that happened to me. Then maybe y'all say, yeah, amen, right? <laughs> you really want to get somebody back. You want to like, man, how can I get this person back? You know, um, it don't have to be something physical. See, when you get somebody back, it don't have to be something physical. You just want to hurt their feelings. That's right. It can. You want to get, you really want to hurt their feelings or you want to plan and get them back for something they didn't did to you. And so you plan that out. You know what I mean? It's, it, we, we've all have, have done it one way or another. 
And so these are the basic types. So we got to manage this stuff so it doesn't become dispositional, okay? What else we talked about? Oh, we mentioned, uh, excuse me, I, got my, I don't know why my nose is bothering me right now. Um, we pulled up Genesis chapter 4, and we talked about Cain. I used three people. I used Cain, I used Moses, and I, yeah, I'm going to use David today. I mentioned David. You made me use David too early. Uh, but I'm going to pull up because there's a lot of scripture to read. So I just was going to do David this morning, but I'm just going over this. So uh, uh, Cain, Moses, and David, right? So we use Cain, Genesis 4. We talked about how Cain was angry, right? And Cain and Abel brought their offering to God, and God rejected Cain's offering because the Bible said that Abel's offering was Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice, then Cain, uh, and we talked about one of the ways that anger comes in is when you are rejected. Because Cain was rejected by God, right? We talked about, you know, just we threw around a couple of theories of why he brought what he brought, why he brought the fruit of the ground, and Abel brought, he was supposed to bring the offering. And we pulled up other things that, you know what, there was always some kind of animal involved in it. And then somebody can bring up, but you know what? There was always grain offerings too in the Old Testament. You know, it wasn't just meat. If you look up at it, they had corn and grain offering too. And that, that was made the offering. So, um, but, you know, you bring up the different theories about the different offerings, what they were supposed to bring. We don't have exactly what God told them to bring, but when we read Hebrews 11, chapter, four, chapter 11, verse 4, it says that Abel, by faith, okay, he did his by faith. And what we brought up, and Sister Hillary brought up, faith comes by hearing. So you had some instructions on what to bring. Nevertheless, he got upset at the rejection of God that brings anger. Now, the offering was rejected because the offering wasn't, pleasing to God it was unacceptable. So that was wrong. So it was offered, if you didn't do it because of the word of God, something, how you offered it was wrong. So that was sin. But then you were angry because of the rejection. And uh, the discipline um, from not doing what was asked was the rejection. So anger set in, because you don't go straight to resentment and murder. You always come through this first. And that's why God always tries to address the root. You, when God talks to you and try to help you out, he, God is over here. You know, if there's something bothering you that's like making you sin, he says, get rid of it, pluck it out. You know, he said that, you know, if, if the eye, pluck the eye out. You know, if you go into heaven, one of the, you got to get rid of it. But the thing is, is that this anger, he says, in your anger, sin not. And so anger turned into jealousy. And jealousy turned into resentment, resentment turned into murder. And what happened with Cain, what we talked about, is that the sin was, his anger was churned. Right? This is what's the problem when you harbor it. Right? Uh, just like you churn to make butter or ice cream, you got to do some work to get it to that texture. Right? When anger is churned, you get those things. That means you did some work with it. You sat with it, you slept with it, you talked with it, you reasoned with it, and you reason with the anger, and because you reason with the anger, you come up to a conclusion, now there's resentment build up, okay? Um, but in this case, jealousy was involved, and he ended up murdering his brother. And we talked about how God personified the anger and says, listen, sin is knocking at your door, Cain, I understand your anger. I'm not, dis I'm not, you're not in sin because you're angry. You're in sin because you're churning it. And I know what that can produce. So he said that you can master it. You can have control of it. It doesn't have to have control of you. 
Okay, bad, bad anger is when it has control of you. But there's good anger is when you have control of it. So God says don't let the sun go down, meaning you got to be able to address it. Give yourself a day before you address something that you're really upset about. And it should, if you're thinking properly, it will subside. Unless you're turning it, then it's going to increase and you'll come up with more. Yeah. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. That's right. I like that word. Give birth and abort. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's James, too. Yep, that's great. That's good. I like that analogy. We talked about Moses. Um, we went to, what was that? Numbers, chapter 20, 7 through 13, I pulled up, okay, in the wilderness, um, almost on their way out, they, they're on the back end of the 40 years in the wilderness, um, and Moses had already made water come out of the rock, God told him to speak to the rock, I mean hit the rock, uh, and the water would come out, and this time God told Moses to hit the rock because the people were complaining. And Moses went out and called them all kind of names. Uh, and he, was, he became frustrated. Cain's anger was rejection. Moses' anger came out of frustration. Because that's another way when you get frustrated. Here it come, okay? But this is letting you know something's wrong. That's why God gave us this, okay? But Moses became frustrated, and in his frustration, he failed to glorify God. God said to uh, speak to the rock, and Moses not only gave the people peace of his mind, uh, he misrepresented God, and not only did he not speak to the rock, but he hit the rock twice. God still allowed the water to come out, but told Moses that because of this issue, you're not going to go into the promised land with the children of Israel. So Moses had an anger problem. Moses is the one that killed the Egyptian. Moses had, (laughs) yes. Ain't that something? Yep. Yep. And it's, and then you could but you could almost understand you got millions of people that you're leading. But now this remember during this part uh, in numbers, this is the children of the parents. Cuz all the parents were gone. That's why you had to do the law, you know, rededicate the Deuteronomy, the second law. So they had to get the law again because they were, you know, uh, um, the children of the parents that had all passed away, except for Joshua and Caleb. And the reason Joshua and Caleb live is because they said that we could take the land the time when God told them they could take it. They the ones that came back and said we can do it. Everybody else said we couldn't do it. So God said, guess what? It took you 40 days, I'm going to give you a year. I'm, I'm, you're going to be in the wilderness for 40 years. You come back with that report. The majority... Uh, will always, sometimes, you know, you come back with the report and people will follow that negative, they destroy uh, a, a vision, they destroy something, they always come back with negative energy. So God says, you know, <clears throat> you're going to wander, you're going to die in the wilderness, but the only ones that lived was the two that came back with the good report. So I like the fact that even though the whole congregation got punished, uh, that God, Say individuals. 
Okay. But Moses got angry. Yeah, he, he killed him. That's what I said. I said he killed the Egyptian. Uh, he lost faith. Uh, not trusting God. Called, that's a loss of faith. Because of frustration. Not that he didn't have it. He wouldn't have been open the Red Sea if he didn't have it. He wouldn't be able to do the plagues if he didn't have it. He wouldn't even go to Egypt if he didn't have it. He's in the Hall of Faith book. But you can have moments where you lose it. <laughs> you lose it. You're like, this ain't, you know, God, I, I heard what you said. I, I see your word, but, you know, I, I got to go off of what I can see. But he lost faith because he didn't glorify God and he didn't do what God asked him to do. When you don't do that, it's a loss of faith. Disobeyed him, and then he had a punishment. So that's what that anger brought Moses, okay? Uh, so David, 1 Samuel 25, 2 to 42. This is the last one. Um, I, have a, I, have a, I have something else to, sh to show you, but... Let's see if we can read some of this. Um, and so I put the whole thing up here so we can just read the text um, so we can see what was taking place. OK, anybody got my you, you good? OK, this is the easy to read version. I switched it up to, help, to make it easier. Quick, can you see that? If you can, you can read the. No, I can see it. OK. There was a very rich man living in Mayon. He had 3,000 3, 3, sheep and 1,000 goats. That man was in Carmel taking care of some business. He went there to cut the wool from his sheep. This man's name was Nabal. He was from Caleb's family. Nabal's wife was named Abigail. She was a wise and beautiful woman, but Nabal was a mean and cruel man. David was in the desert when he heard that Nabal was cutting the wool from his sheep. Now, he was a cruel man. I, I'm not, this is, that's this. Posis that's dispositional. This guy was just nasty. Okay? Go ahead. David sent ten young men to talk to Nabal. He told them, go to Carmel, find Nabal, and tell him hello for me. David gave them this message for Nabal. May you and your family be well, and all that, your own, all that you own be well. I heard that you are cutting wool from your sheep. Your shepherds were with us for a while, and we did nothing wrong to them. We never took anything from your shepherds while they were at Carmel. So this is the first part. So I, I try to do every seven verses. So David heard this man was cutting this. Well, remember, first of all, Wednesday, I, what I shared was that, you know, in the city part, the city was protected, right? David wasn't king yet. This is before he was king. He's just a warrior, right? He was a captain of the army, David. Um, and you know, Saul ended up being jealous of him because David was so good at his job. But the city was protected. But there were rural parts that were um, objects or targets of uh, thieves and robbers to come and take their things. So what David did was David offered protection to the people who couldn't protect themselves. In return, just wanted to take care of his men, right? This is not extortion. This is a service that he's providing. So, and you pay for the service. That's not extortion. Extortion is, we in the, we in the hood, we here, if you, if you don't want us to mess with you, then you got to give me some money. That's extortion. You paying so they don't mess with you. Right? <laughs> but this, David is protecting them. And now he's, he's making wool jackets and he's cutting, he's, he's sharing sheep. So David's like, well, we can use it. He says, uh, we ain't do anything wrong to you. Right? And now David wants him to take care of his men. Verse 8. Ask your servants and they will tell you this is true. Please be kind to my young men. 
We come to you now at this happy time. Please give these young men anything you can. Please do this for me, your friend, David. Man, I mean, that, that's nice. Ain't that nice? Just give them what you can. I heard you were sharing your sheep. Just, can you give them what you, what you can? It wasn't even like a certain amount. Your friend, David. <laughs> Verse 9. David's men went to Nabal. They gave his message to Nabal, but Nabal said, who is David? Who is the son of Jesse? Well, now, how, wait a minute. Did, do you see that, what he just said? Who was David? How do you know he's the son of Jesse? Because <laughs> you know, right? They knew who David was, but he's being cruel. He knows who David is. David's the captain of the army. He knows who David is. Continue. There are many slaves who have run away from their masters these days. I have bread and water, and I have the meat I killed for my servants who cut the wool from my sheep, but I won't give them to men I don't even know. Now, that's a shame. Okay? And I don't even know, you know, Sister Tilly, I just, this comment, this is a little comment in here. This is just me. What are you saying? There are many, he said, I don't know him. There are many slaves who have run away from their masters. I think he's talking about Saul and David. Because it's right in the context of, well, who is David? He ain't even, he, he running from Saul. Well, <laughs> right. You run away from your master. That's what he's saying. You just a servant. Mm -hmm. Right? I got some people that did something. Right. Right. <laughs> That's what he's saying, because this is during that era. Because David is not king yet. Right, right. Right? They know, some people know that he's going to be king, as you're going to continue to read, see. But he's not even king yet. He's just doing, he was captain of the army, and he's just, he's doing a great job at what he's doing, being successful. 12. David's men went back and told him everything that Nabal had said. David's response was, Here we go. Put on your swords. <laughs> <laughs> so David and his men put on their swords. About 400 men went with David, while 200 of them stayed with the supplies. Y'all stay, 200, y'all stay here. Load up. One of Nabal's servants. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh. Right. But he did it in front of his his men. Yes, that's really embarrassing. You did it in front of his the people that respect him and leading him. Right. He got what do we call it. Uh, <laughs> he got he got dissed in front of his boys. Right. What you going to do? I got to do something. <laughs> Glory. Right, 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 right. What? Yo, John, you gonna take that? But they didn't say that. <laughs> but I'm saying that's, that's yeah, yeah. That's how he felt. That's how he felt. That was disrespectful. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, where we at? Fourteen. Okay. One of Nabal's servants spoke to Nabal's wife, Abigail. The servant said, "David sent messengers from the desert to meet our master, but Nabal was rude to them." So now, the servants is talking to Nabal's wife and telling her what just happened, okay? 15. These men were very good to us while we were out in the field Listen with the to sheep. their statement. David's men were with us the whole time and they never did anything wrong to us. They did not take anything from us. His men protected us night and day. Y'all see that? Continue. They were like a wall around us. They protected us while we were with them caring for the sheep. <sighs> While we were caring for the sheep that you are sharing now. Because if we didn't protect them, you might not have had them sheep. That's right. That's right. They, they might have been on Tillery's grill. <laughs> Verse 17. Nabal was foolish to say what he did. Terrible trouble is coming to our master and all his family. You need to think of something to do. So he's telling uh, Abigail, listen. She must, he must know that she has wisdom 
and he must notice how their master is. And see, he shouldn't have said that. So now Abigail is going to do something. 18. Abigail quickly gathered up 200 loaves of bread, two full wine bags, five cooked sheep, and a bushel of cooked grain, about two quarts of raisins, and 200 cakes of pressed figs. She put them on donkeys. Mm -hmm. So they had money. So this is a rich family. I just want you to see this guy's disposition. He was well off. Okay, he was well off. Fig Newtons and everything. <laughs> Fig Newtons. <laughs> 19. Then Abigail told her servants, go on, I'll follow you. But she did not tell her husband. Now, I'll leave that for the ladies' class. <laughs> I'm going to leave that for the ladies' class. Let me tell your husband everything. If you're working something out, you're a child of God. There's some things you don't need to tell your husband. I'll say it again for Sister Tiller. <laughs> <laughs> I like messing with y'all too, though. <laughs> well, he's a man of God. I mean, he's, I mean, he's supposed to be a man of God, but she's a woman of God. So she's a woman of God, but she's smart. She knows her husband. Trying to, what's the good scenario? She's, I was trying to say for the ladies, she's living with a man that's not spiritual. All right, I'm trying to leave it for the ladies. Yeah, I know you're trying, you know, they ain't going to let you leave it though. They ain't going to let me leave it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but she's, so the, the servant, she finds out, right? She finds out. So she spins right into action. Okay, verse 20. Abigail rode her donkey down to the other side of the mountain. She met David and his men coming from the other direction. David was saying, I protected Nabal's property in the desert. I made sure not. One of his sheep was missing. Now, what David is doing, we're still talking about David is upset. Okay? Now he's telling you why. Okay? He is upset. And what he's saying is, I have a right to be angry. But that ain't the point. Because he does have a what? He has a right. Mm -hmm. We just talked about, I like that abortion. I like that, what do you say? Yeah. That birth, birth excuse me, birth and abortion. Mm -hmm. Abort. It's, it's, anger has been, nothing has been, is getting ready to because he said everybody load up. Right, right, right. Okay? His intention, he's going to kill them. He's going to wipe them out. Matter of fact, he's going to wipe the servants out too. Because the servants said, listen, all of us getting ready to die. Right, right. He ain't bringing no 400 men for one dude. <laughs> right, right, right. He says, all of us going to be wiped out. Because yeah. David is a master at destruction. Yeah. Yeah. So when he come through, there ain't no witnesses. When he come through, he's coming through. So they know, he, they say, we all going to die if you don't do something. Abigail, please. It sound like Esther. <laughs> no, that's a great point. We don't even think about it. That's what I'm, and Faith, that's a great point because that's, that's, I'm glad you brought that up because that's part of the message in what David wasn't thinking he was getting ready to do because in your anger, Guess what you hurt? People that don't have nothing to do with it. They don't even know what's going on. You hurt other people mm -hmm. because of your frustration out on this person. Yeah, right, right. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So he's getting ready to do that, which Abigail was going to bring up. Yeah. So that's why I said that was an excellent point. Uh, I'm so, sorry, Corey, I need to think again. Do 21 I, again? I did all that. Okay. David was saying, I protected Nabal's property in the desert. I made sure not one of his sheep was missing. I did all that for nothing. I was good to him, but he was rude to me. 
I swear, I will not. I won't let let even one man in Nabel's family live until tomorrow morning. Is it no joke? He's good. That's why God chose David. Saul didn't. You ain't got to worry about David, right? <laughs> <laughs> but that's why he was cho- because. God knew that David was that kind of warrior, and that's what he needed to be able to accomplish what God wants to accomplish. I want you to understand something about God's sovereignty, because whether we do what he says, he act, whether we do what he asks us to do or not do what he asks us, asks us to do, he can still work out his will. Okay, he can work out his will, and this is what he can work out his will. When you think about the genealogy of Jesus and how God said in Genesis about the seed that was going to come and crush the devil's seed, and all through the genealogy, the devil was looking for that seed. He know it's one seed that he's looking for. He doesn't know who the seed is or where it's coming from. But in all of that uh, sovereignty of all, all of Jacob's sons, the seed was coming out of one of the sons, and his name was Judah. Isn't it amazing how uh, in Tamar's, which was his daughter-in-law, and her husband passed and then the son passed because he wouldn't take the wife. How she, she tricked Judah into sleeping with her. I'm, I'm, I'm pointing out something. God is, she, formed, she made herself look like a prostitute and then slept with Judah. Judah ain't supposed to be sleeping with no prostitutes and she ain't supposed to be doing what she's doing. Sure. But what I'm saying is even through our stupidity, God still will allow his will to be done. God didn't make Tamar do that. God didn't make Judah do that. But it was through their seed line that Jesus was going to come. And what I'm saying is that through God's will, I don't care what you say you're not going to do. I don't care what you say you are going to do. I don't care what you, whatever plan you come with, whatever accident we think happens, you can't stop God's will. You're not going to stop God's will. The sovereignty of God is so powerful. So, where do we leave off, Cor? I'm glad you're following. We finished it. We finished that. Okay. 22. I swear I won't let even one man in Nabal's family live until tomorrow morning. Just then, Abigail arrived. When she saw David, she quickly got off her donkey and bowed down with her face to the ground in front of him. So he's coming, he's, and David's talking it up. <laughs> Listen, I'm telling you, when I get there, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't letting one family man, that, that thing is churning. He probably know how he's going to slaughter him and everything. No, nobody's going to left. And here comes. Smack down. And the thing is, he had time to think about it. But he didn't. He was churning it. Here come God. Because Abigail, God is using her. Yes. Right. Right. But don't let that thing ferment. Right. And That's right. You live with it. That's right. Don't worry till it gets there. Let's still see any potential positive outcome. That's right. You know what I'm saying? And that's what he's doing. Yep. And he's getting ready to hurt innocent people. He's churning it. He's not trying to resolve anything. Uh, well, maybe I, I need to hear from him first. No, he ain't say none of that. <laughs> <laughs> I, need, I need to hear from the horse's mouth first. No, I don't need to hear from the horse's mouth. I'm coming to get him. Yes. Mm 
Yeah. He had a choice. Well, he did have a choice. See, I know what you're saying, though. But because of how it looked disrespectful, So he had a choice. He had a choice. This wasn't a military, but you got to look at this wasn't some military campaign. This was a personal personal, issue. Personal, yeah. Because he was, he got upset and lost his temper. Yes. That's right. We make that mistake because we don't use the tools. I'm gonna talk about this morning that we have, we have tools that we're not using. Yes. Yep. You find yourself tightening those cuffs a little bit harder, Brother yeah, Tillery. Right, right, right. Because <laughs> this guy says something. Because the guy says, hey, 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 somebody called your mama now. Right. What did that hurt? Did your mama not? Right. You don't have to beat him up. But you, you know, right. you, you, know, you, you, know, you, you respond. It's the Tillery. Well, I don't know if you ever did. He started to make something that kind of hurt for a little old lady and he grabbed Wow. And and when you hear what happened, you know what happened. He got that man got mad because of the way that his wife was talked to this way. Disrespect. Mm. Don't give him the right to do it. Don't give him the right to do it. And but but that's a really good example. Yeah, it just yeah. right. And that's a that's that's what you call that sudden. It just come right out. You just respond to it. Where we at, Corey? Twenty four. Twenty four. Abigail fell at his feet and said, Sir, please let me talk to you. Listen to what I say. Blame me for what happened. Now, here comes God. It's, it's Abigail. But here is God talking to his conscience. 25. I didn't see the men you sent. Sir, don't pay any attention to that worthless man, Nabal. His name means foolish, and that is what he is. The Lord has kept you from killing innocent people. As surely as the Lord lives, and you as well, may your enemies and anyone else you, who wants to harm you be cursed as Nabal is. Now I am bringing this gift to you. Please give these things to your men. Please forgive me for doing wrong. I know the Lord will make your family strong because you fight his battles. People will never find anything bad about you as long as you live. Tell me what just happened. <laughs> In your own words, before I even say anything. Sister? Mm-hmm. And say, remember who you are, basically. Right. And but then she also said she also takes the blame. Yeah. This is totally good. Mm-hmm. Right. That's right. That's right. Guess what else? You had Jane up? Oh. No. 
What did he come for? Yeah, but what, was the, what did he want in the first place? He wants stuff for his... So first I'm going to take care of what you wanted. So now you don't have a reason. She disarmed him. Forgive me, like you said. Didn't mean to do that. You can blame me, but, but forgive me. I'll take the blame for that. Now, it disarms us. It brings down his wrath. Where is he? Wrath, wrath. You can use whatever. It's bringing it down. Then, she tells him something. That, first of all, you're going to be king one day. And you don't want innocent blood on your hand. So now, what she is doing is what one of the men could have done if they were in that place. They could have talked David. They might not have been able to say what she said as far as, you know, Nabal being uh, st stupid or uh, crazy, whatever she said. What she said? Foolish. Foolish. That's what his name is. His mama named him that. <laughs> um, but that's the only positive conversation he had. Since the time he got angry. That's the only positive conversation he had. That was the only positive conversation he had in his mind. Because as I always say to the brothers, I said, listen, if your voice is the only voice that you hear, you're in trouble. You can't be the only voice that you hear. You can't. You need to talk to somebody. He said. No, I was going. I got a comment. Okay. Uh, if something, if you, if when you get to that point, you need to call somebody, a family member, a brother, sisters, somebody. You need to call. I ain't talking about call somebody that's going to agree with you. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think, especially for me, that's very important for me because when you're in that space, you can't see the full picture. You don't have that bird's eye view. Don't. Right. And that's why you have the, the one inclination that you will hold with you is this, and will help you learn is, all right, I need to talk to somebody. And that's, that's great enough right there. Right? Because that's the step. I just need to talk to somebody because I already know I'm gone right now. You know, they've been not cross right now. God, they're going to get it, if, you know. But you already, I need to talk to somebody because I need someone to help me with my rationalization of things. Right. Yep, you need to be able to call somebody. Oh, but Tillery and then Corey, you had your hand up, and then I'm going to get Corey. Yes, yes, you do. You do. You see it. You see it in Moses. Moses did it. He, he, he was guilty. Well, they, he said they guilty, but put it on them. Right. And, and the thing is, is that, 
You know, he, he was wrong for what he said and did, but it wasn't something that needed warranted death. You see, the only reason it's warranted death is because David had that power. That's what I mean. Right? It's just like me preaching. I, there's some authority that I have as the preacher. How are you going to use it? Right. That's Because yeah. you could take your power and abuse the position that you had. Moses did that. That's why God said, you failed to glorify me. Because I gave you that authority, and you took that authority and lashed out at the congregation. It's abuse of authority. That's what Trump in trouble for. Go ahead, go on. Yeah. <laughs> no, you just you just made the first half of my point. Oh, I'm sorry. Saying, but no. But but the but the other part behind that that I was gonna say is that she protected she protected David's reputation. And so anger is something that can get your reputation mm. in trouble. And your reputation is something that will last. Mm -hmm. Because once you do something that tarnishes your reputation, it's hard to shake that. Even after you do all things right afterwards, what you did wrong is something that will always taint your reputation from there on out. That's good. That's good. That's good. These are all great points y'all making. This is, this is just learning us how to control our anger. Um, I'm going to try to close out. Let's get this last verse in. If someone else chases you to kill you, the Lord your God will save your life. But if he will throw away your enemies like a stone from a sling, the Lord promised to do many good things for you, and he will keep his promises. He will make you leader over Israel. So don't do anything that would make you guilty of killing innocent people. Please don't fall in that trap. Mm. Please remember me when the Lord blesses you. David answered Abigail, praise the Lord, the God of Israel. Praise God for sending you to meet me. Yes, you get me fall into Satan's trap. Where is it? I know it's up here. That's what Satan does. He tempts you with things that are common to man. What is common to man? Emotions. So guess what? I'll use some of your anger emotions to try to get you to sin. It's a trap. God told Cain, listen, don't fall into the trap. Sin is at the door. Peter, Satan desires to sift you. Don't fall into the trap. God did this. 33. God bless you for good judgment. Woo. You kept me from killing innocent people today. As surely as the Lord, the God of Israel lives, if you hadn't come quickly to meet me, <laughs> not one man in Nabal's family would have lived until tomorrow morning. But the Lord pre prevented me from hurting you. Then David accepted Abigail's gifts. He told her, go home in peace. I have listened to your request, and I will do what you asked. So he says, listen, I know that this is where you glorify God. When you come to the conclusion that you was getting ready to sin and you got a word from God, then when you come off the anger, you say, you know what? God prevented me from knocking you out. <laughs> Because as surely as I live, I was going to take out everybody in your family. This is how I felt and maybe still feel, but God showed me that this would be sin. That's why he's a man after God's own heart. Because when his wrong is pointed out, he doesn't try to rationalize his wrong. He admits that this is the wrong way to do it. Now, I still might have the feeling, but I ain't doing it. Because of God's message. Because he said it's short. Now he told he had to tell her what he was going to do. He told her. Well, guess what I was getting ready to do? I was getting ready to take out your, your whole family. She said, listen. You know, listen, God got some use for you. You want to be king of Israel. You want this on your hands? For God to say, and he said, that's good judgment. Because guess what? In my anger, 
Guess what you don't have? You don't have it. That's why you can't make, it's hard to make decisions. When you realize wrath, when wrath come on you, don't make no decisions then. Wait. Because all you're seeing is red. All you're seeing is red. It was injustice that got David upset. He was frustrated and Nathan didn't do it and he was insulted. That's what it was, his anger was kindled by, those three things. Just like y'all said. Yes? Yeah, yeah. She said, she'll do it. She'll type, 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 type. And then, you know, you read it, you look, you might save it in your trash. A lot of times she'll go back, you read it, you know, you brush through on it, and she'll just delete it. Yeah. Because sometimes you just got to get it out. Right. And then you, and then you just brush through it, and then you can be done with it. You know, right. You just don't spend it. Right. That's why, that's why a lot of times you, you know, that time, like you said, that Think about what you're doing before you do it. That's right. That's right. It's so important. It is. It is. So, you know, this was to help us. Um, you could turn that off. Thanks. This was to help us um, just touch on anger, the different types and how it comes about. Um, and, uh, you know, we have to learn how to abort it when, it when it's getting ready to turn into something else. Okay? Because um, that's where it's sin. Sin is a birth process. You don't go from something happens to murder. You go through a process and then anger comes in. And now you have to know how to manage the anger, right? And that has to do with your will. And that's why God has given you a will. He's given you emotions, but he also has given you a will. And the will is designed to control the emotions or the reaction to those emotions that you have, because we have them. You're always going to have anger. You're going to live with it. It's part of who you are. But it doesn't have to control you, and it doesn't have to become a characteristic trait. Always angry, always upset. And you get used to being that way. And you don't even see it. People point out. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. So I'll save the other stuff I have.